Coding solutions are just one type of digital technology solutions, but they are fundamental and required for all robotics and information-based solutions. But we should not think of digital technologies as a coding course. Programming languages are just one of the many tools that students will draw upon in developing solutions to problems. And even within programming, students' ability to select from different programming languages that offer advantages when solving different sorts of problems is important. Many times a simple scripting or block-based language may be sufficient, but as the complexity of problems increases, more specialised languages are needed. Those designed for the web, hardware, information systems or artificial intelligence solutions. Through F to 10, students will explore a range of programming language tools. But students do not need to become experts in any particular programming language. By year 10, they do need to be able to create object-oriented modular programs that use iteration and branching. But this requires only a fraction of the full detail a computer programmer would learn in tertiary studies. So keep things in perspective. This is not even a senior course in computing. What we do want is students to be able to solve problems. And many digital technology solutions will require an understanding of programming languages, but not a comprehensive understanding. Students may learn these aspects as they need to develop a computer game or program a robot, website, or Internet of Things device. And this can often be achieved by self-paced tutorials and online texts. But these are just one way of learning programming. And we have 11 years to slowly develop their understanding. So we can start with students learning to input commands via buttons on a bbot, create macros command sequences in software such as spreadsheets or word processors, and scripted commands, which simply means that there are a list of actions that are automatically done one at a time instead of us doing them manually. But these are perfectly sufficient for directing robotic arms or drones. But it is the more common programming languages framed around an integrated development environment or IDE. And this has all the tools to sequence programming commands, compile these into machine code so they run quickly, check the code for errors known as debugging, and increasingly to visually simulate the output of the program. Now traditionally this has required the programming language to be installed on a computer. But some languages can now be programmed from tablet devices um, or directly onto particular devices such as robots or Adrenos. And many languages now have online IDEs where programming can be done via a web browser. IDEs compile comprise an ecosystem of tools, documents, guides, code libraries, debuggers, testing tools and other elements that make professional coding easier. But for F to 10, we can slowly introduce programming through a range of simpler environments. In the early years, storybooks, games and activities can be used to introduce algorithms and we can abstract these into coded instructions. We can use manipulables to make algorithmic instructions easier to understand, such as Cubetto, Puzzlets, Cubes Coding, and Osmo, which makes the sequence of coding commands visible and tactile. And one of the advantages of visual block-based programming, such as Blockly, Scratch, Alice, or Mindstorms, is that the flow of how instructions are processed is visualized. Students can see where branching occurs and how the execution path of a program changes, or how repeating loops occur in a program. Now this has always been done. We've used flowcharts and other diagra diagramming tools, but previously it was a distinct design stage. Visual programming combines the design and execution stages and permits rapid evaluation and modification of student solutions without the need to iterate through the entire design cycle. As students progress through primary school, their programs will go in complexity as they aim to develop, more, develop solutions to more complicated problems. Visual programming languages have the advantage of showing at a glance how programs should run. 
But in this also lies their disadvantage. Once a program includes more complexity than can be seen at a glance, text-based programming languages become more efficient and easier to understand. It all comes back to abstraction and the ability of the human brain to process a finite amount of information at any one time. This is known as cognitive load. We can generally hold seven to nine different things in short-term memory. But these can be at any level of abstraction. So while we would struggle holding more than one command in mind if we had to think of a series of binary digits, we can remember and process several programming commands, move forward, turn left, move forward, etc., sufficient to draw a simple shape such as a square, but not enough to draw a car. But if we again abstract to draw a rectangle, two triangles and two circles, we could remember the commands to draw a simple car. Visual programming is great for this, as instead of remembering specific words and their associated grammatical rules, known as syntax, we can simply move around images representing various commands. Increasingly, students will combine series of such commands and give these names, such as draw circle or calculate area. And we can then reuse this new abstracted command elsewhere in our program. So now our programming is less about a sequence of instructions and more a collection of abstracted subprograms, and these we call procedures or modules. Yes, there will be an initial sequence of commands, often just to get the program started, but most of the programming occurs between these procedures. Now things become even more complicated when we introduce the concept of events, where different procedures can be started in response to things occurring such as a mouse button being pressed, or a value being met, e.g. A, a score in a game, and multiple procedures can then be happening at one time. Now, we cannot chart a single path through our program as with simple flowcharts, as the program can have multiple paths occurring at the same time, a concept known as parallel processing. So by this stage, the visual abstraction of many languages becomes redundant and it is easier for students to understand what is occurring between the various procedures in their program using textual commands and abstracting these as modules. The final type of programming that students come to engage with in digital technologies is object oriented where to help conceptualize how various programming events and paths interact, we frame programs as a collection of objects that have properties or attributes and commands can change these attributes. So instead of having to understand all the various pathways the program may take, we define the objects in the program and each event or instruction is a set of commands called methods that change the attributes of other objects. Objects can also contain data stored in fields that we can likewise use and change much as we might do in a spreadsheet. Another way in which object oriented programming is different is a concept of inheritance. Which, can we use, which we can use to abstract objects. We create classes of objects, and by defining the attributes of the class, all of the objects in that class will take on these attributes. So we could have a class of shapes, and specify that all shapes would have attributes of length, breadth, and height. Now each shape related to each shape related object becomes an instance of this class. So the square object for drawing a square would have the dimension attributes defined for it by its class. For simple programs, this may seem like a lot of additional bother, but once programs become more complex, it can be useful. Now, instead of having to understand how the entire program works, to include the ability to draw a new shape, we just need to look at the attributes of the shape class and define a new instance for our new shape. And attributes for objects can include many, many things. Their color, position on, on the screen, the type of information stored by the object, be it text or numbers, and many other properties that make team programming and changing programs a lot easier. Now, object-oriented programming can start to be introduced much earlier than 9 and 10, with many aspects of visual and robotics programming languages, including object-oriented concepts, because you're working with various screen objects or robotic attachments, such as a motor or a sensor, and it's easier to conceptualize these as objects with attributes that can be modified. So even for object-oriented programming concepts, 
we gradually introduce students over the 11 years of digital technologies to increasingly more complex coding concepts and programming tools and develop their understanding and confidence to create solutions with digital technologies.